Ben Kramer, I'm thanks. Gonna, for, what? I'm going to give you some of my checklist. <laughs> <laughs> I have a checklist. That's usually in there. Ben, how's it going today, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I feel like we've done this before. We have. It's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Deja vu? Deja vu. Deja vu going on here. Let's, <laughs> Let's talk about the Winnipeg Folk Festival. Yeah. You've been doing this for a while. How long? Six years. Year six this year. So five years plus this. How did you get into, into this? Uh, the festival was making a change in their kitchen, uh, looking for kind of new leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I was working at the University of Winnipeg running diversity foods, uh, doing locally sourced, sustainable, ethical, all those tag words uh, style food on a large scale. So, tag words, but you actually yeah, do that I, stuff. Yeah, follow through on it. I just don't say it, I actually do it. Right. We could talk about names of people later if I want. <laughs> we don't. But um, yeah, no, so they were looking for somebody whose ethics matched theirs and, and did the kind of volume that they needed and uh, came, came to us and we rolled in and figured it out. Who was doing it before? Like, well, what did they? What kind of food were they sourcing before? Who was doing? Uh, it, was, it was similar. It was always the same style of ethics and whatnot. Uh, there was a, a couple of restaurateurs who were running it for 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. It was just time to make a change. So you were with UW before. Yeah. Then you parted ways two years after you started this. Yeah, I started. I did two years here under diversity, and that second year was my last year with diversity. Went out on my own. Uh, and the festival asked if I'd stay on, so I did. Okay, that, that's got to be a huge compliment, right? You part ways with, with a larger entity and they choose to go with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, a good was, thing, right? It was a good thing, yeah. yeah. I was happy, uh, happy they chose me. Okay, so let's talk about the people you feed. Who do you feed here? And uh, how many? Lots. We, uh, we feed all the crew, uh, all the volunteers, uh, some of the artists. Uh, we average, I would say... 10, 11,000 meals uh, a day split up between breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So anywhere between 22 and 3,800 people a meal. Three square meals. Three times plus snacks and sometimes continuous food. What do you mean plus snacks? So let's say I've eaten my dinner. I'm a volunteer. I've eaten breakfast. It's in between breakfast and lunch. Yeah. And I want a snack of some sort. Yeah, we don't have official snacks, but we don't have a hard shutdown time either. So. You know, if we do, if we're running lunch till two mm -hmm. and we still have food, we'll just keep it open. Okay. And we'll it. keep feeding people who maybe miss the two o'clock cutoff because out here in the heat with the festivities, people kind of lose track of time. Okay. So this we, is a non. We try and have question. food available. I have a non-food question. What are these green bugs that are that fly around here? I'm not sure. What are they? I don't know, but they don't bite. They don't no, bite. I wonder harmless. what they are. Look at this, it's your friend. You got a new, you got a new slimy friend. I wonder how they taste. <laughs> a lot of protein in that yeah. bad boy, right? Yeah, we served crickets out here. Uh, second year I was here. Yeah. What? what? It's part of the menu? Yeah, I worked it into the menu. It was like a, most people liked it. It was like an 80% wow. success. How did you, okay, so what do you mean? What was it? Uh, well, at the university I was working with alternative sustainable proteins. Uh, and and crickets are super high in protein. Yeah, and this was like pre-cricket protein powder craze. Right. This yep. was like. Six years ago? Yeah, yep. I seem to remember yeah. an article or something. Yeah, that was about us. Yeah. yeah, I did crickets and mealworms. I found a farm out of, uh, yeah. Could do yeah, the we had that reaction. I don't think I could do the mealworms. Yeah, I found a were farm. They, were they ground up? Did people know oh, what they were? I found a farm out of Ontario that was breeding crickets and mealworms for food. Obviously, different than for breeding it for animal feed. Um, There's a whole different process involved. We don't have to get into that. But yeah, we brought out uh, cricket flour. And we did uh, cricket protein bars. And mm -hmm. then we also, for the adventurous, brought out crickets that we made a salsa with and served with our tacos. Oh. That was a harder sell due to texture issues. Right, the but other way it's all blended up and you can't even tell. 100%, yeah. It tastes but, like a sunflower seed. But mm -hmm. the salsa, it's chunky. Yeah, it's the visual. It's a visual and so the mental. You can see like cricket heads and legs? It's a mental, mental uh, part that a lot of people struggle with, not the taste. Right. Yeah, and this pretty. year, no crickets on the menu this year. Haven't done cricket since mm. here. So what's on the menu this year? All kinds of stuff. Uh, breakfast we do keep pretty similar. Uh, we do a kind of a continental spread: yogurt, uh, tall grass bakes, fresh muffins for us every day. Uh, oatmeal. Nature's Farm does granola for us. Uh, lots of fruit. Lots of hydration type <laughs> situation. Uh, hard boiled eggs from Nature's Farm. And then yeah, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have a different menu every day every meal so four that's days. crazy for that four much days. for that for that much food for that many people it's yeah different. yeah like today we did uh 
Northern Pike. Uh, Bearcat Fisheries, my friend Barry, uh, catches fish up north. So we did some fish tacos. Uh, we did a quinoa salad with tamarack quinoa, which is locally grown. Tons okay. of veggies. So this is volunteer food we're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. for They're free. They're being well fed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. three Because it meals smells so good right now. Yeah, we got, we got pasture-raised Ferris Farm sausage on the grill right now. Getting ready for dinner. Let's cut this in a few short. Hundreds, cut it off right hundreds now. of pounds of sausage. <laughs> He's going to be first in line. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who is this guy? <laughs> volunteer for whatever. Um, speaking of which volunteers, how do you get them? How do you train them? Uh, well, Folkfest is a fantastic, they've been doing this forever. So they, they do a fantastic job of recruiting, training, systemizing the whole volunteer experience. Don't know how they do it. They do it really well. Uh, so they recruit my crew for me, uh, most of them anyway. And uh, I put them together in teams. Um, and I, you know, unlike other crews, I break this kitchen down into a pretty rigid kind of kitchen structure. There's like a hierarchy, there's crew chiefs that run the crews. It, it, it's the only way it works doing this kind of work and this kind of volume. But it's great, everybody has a blast. And we, uh, we have a pretty high retention rate, people come back. So that means that I'm not pushing them too hard and I'm not being too mean. They're having fun. Wow, that's very strange for you. I know. Um, how many kitchen staff do you have back there cooking? Uh, just shy of 300. Wow. So it's a big, I think it's the biggest crew that the festival has. Food's important. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a lot of product to process. Do the same people have the same jobs all the way through? Like, I'm cutting potatoes. Am I cutting potatoes every day? No, no, no. Every every shift is different. So most crews, depending, if you're if it's a meal time, uh, your shift would be uh, finishing cooking and then serving. Mm -hmm. Our crews also serve. Um, and then if it's prep time, yeah, they're prepping. But every day is different. It's different items. To be honest, sometimes if you're working the 12 to 4 shift, you might be cutting potatoes for four hours, mm -hmm. but tomorrow you'll be picking lettuce or chopping parsley or... Right, something different. That would yeah, be, it's yeah. different every day. Uh, we spoke about local vendors supplying your food. Yeah. Right, and I know that obviously in this volume it may be a problem for local vendors to supply as yeah. much stuff as you're going to need. How do you handle that? Uh, I got 20 plus vendors this year, which is kind of, that's even unheard of for a lot of restaurants. Um, I just piece it together. I give them a lot of notice. Um, Wild Earth Farms is 20 minutes from here. They are able to do some decent volume. We talk actually in the winter about crops and volumes. I can't guarantee anything, but I give him predictions. He tells me what he thinks they'll have ready. You're having that those conversations in the, in the winter. winter. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, when he's that's when they, that's when farmers are seed buying, right? So he needs to know volumes and what I want to commit to and or try. There's no commitment because right. it's Winnipeg weather. Mm -hmm. Could get nothing. You know, if it's a bad year, but yeah, and then I just kind of piece it together. So if I need, you know, five thousand pounds of something, it's probably coming from four farms, not one. Logistically, that must be hard for you. Yeah, it's a MacBook with spreadsheets. <laughs> and when do you start? <laughs> when do you start all the planning? Uh, well, we have conversations in the winter, but you, a couple months out, we kind of get rolling. I kind of get into that headspace. We start having crew meetings. Uh, so they start, Folk Fest starts recruiting volunteers. Probably a month out, we finalize a menu, uh, but then we have to we have to write a menu, and then we have to uh, break that menu into ingredients or into recipes, and then we have to break those recipes into ingredients, and then we have to break that into quantity. Right. So that's uh, a ton it's of work. About, yeah, wow. and then once we do that, that's just figuring out how much food we need. Then we have to break that. We have five main crews that do all the prep. Mm -hmm. They all work four-hour shifts. We have to take that menu and decide, okay, Friday we need this done. That means on Thursday, this crew has to do this, this crew has to And then we logistically break it down into individual tasks. So that's you talking with how many people to, to figure that out? I do that with one helper. It sounds so fun. I do, actually, I, yeah. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty OCD. I'm really organized. That's one of the strengths of why I'm able to do big events and projects like this and table for 1200 and i really love logistics mm -hmm. and i've got all, i've been doing it for a long time so i've got a lot of systems in place mm -hmm. and it's just replicating them and changing this and moving that uh, so we've gotten really good at figuring out quantities and breaking down tasks and timing this is a huge thing so it's a little harder but uh yeah it's just it's just steps it's just a lot of steps and it's walking through like it. It's no problem. It's just no, steps, it's, it's yeah. a lot of work. But the, the beauty is like I've gone over it so many times uh, and reviewed it so many times. 
from the beginning of the festival to the end of the festival before I even get here, mm -hmm. that by the time I get here, I feel like I've already done it. Mm. Like it's that. When, when, how far out do you set up your kitchen? Uh, I come out here Friday, the Friday before, to receive these big refrigerated trucks and get them in place. Um, that's handy. Yeah, walking, 53 foot walking freezing. Yeah, that's crazy. That's great. Uh, so I come out Friday for a little bit. I take the weekend before festival off if I can. If I'm behind on paperwork and such, I work. But last few years I've been able to have the weekend off before. Uh, I come out here Monday for the day, spend most of the day out here getting organized. We feed some of the volunteers Monday, small amount, couple hundred, before the kitchen set up. Like, couple, couple hundred, <laughs> couple hundred. biggie. So like, yeah, Monday we do a couple hundred, uh, just for the crews working and still setting up and cutting the lawns and doing all that kind of stuff. And, stuff. and then Tuesday it goes up, you know, three or four hundred. Uh, and then Tuesday night I move out, like I stay out here, I rent a camper behind the kitchen and I sleep out here from Tuesday until the following Monday. But yeah, Monday we a few hundred, Tuesdays a few hundred more, Wednesdays 600 maybe, 500, and then Thursdays, you know, 4,000 or something. Wow. Good Lord. You said this year is your smoothest year so far. So far. <laughs> it's, it's, I guess it's, it's day three. It's Saturday dinner. I got two more, two more, three more meals after this. Which is Saturday, the big dinner day? Saturday is, uh, there, we, we were just talking about this earlier. I always say that Saturday is the hardest day or the biggest day. It's the most numbers that we do. Lineups are the longest. People are a little tired, a little cranky from the heat or the weather. Right, and it's pretty festival. hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, but we've also been doing this for a couple of days now, so the machine's running really well. Right, everybody knows their thing. Yeah, so it's it's interesting because I was somebody asked me the other day which is the hardest day, and they all were, but then they all weren't. So I was like, Thursday is the hardest day because it's the first day. Mm -hmm. Actually, sorry, Wednesday is the hardest day because I'm out here without a bunch of volunteers and we're receiving like thousands of pounds of food. So getting that organized is stressful because there's no help or very little help. Like as far as receiving it and putting it away and whatever. Yeah. And if, you know, like right now I've got 300 people. So if I need 10 cases of something, I'm like, hey, you 10 guys go get these 10 cases. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wednesday, we're out here kind of solo getting organized. So that's physically an exhausting day. For sure. But it's great because there's nobody here and kind of get organized in peace and then thursday is the hardest day because that's the first day of a full crew we've got everybody here all at once it's their first day they've kind of forgotten what they do from last year because they haven't been here here for a year right. everybody's kind of finding their legs and then we roll into friday which is our first full day thursday we only do dinner and friday's hard because it's our first full day and then saturday's our busiest day so that makes it hard and then Sunday, which should be smooth sailing, is the day where it's like, oh, we're running out of food. Maybe yeah. we got to adapt, adapt this recipe and change this, you know. If, I, if, I, if we're missing something on Friday, I have a truck full of food I can just improvise with. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, I realize, oh, I you used improvised. that stuff that I was supposed to use for this because I was improvising and I haven't replaced it yet. Got it. So, and then Monday I sleep. And do you get to, do you get to enjoy any of the... the um... Yeah. Music. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of hours, but it's there's a lot of help and it's not all me. I I don't do much. I do a lot of planning, I do a lot of organizing, I do a lot of purchasing, and I do a lot of problem solving. But I'm not doing the hard work. These guys are doing the hard work. The volunteers are the ones actually pulling it off. I've just given them the list of what they need to do, but they they're doing it. In three years, I don't think I've picked up a knife other than to show somebody a safer way to cut something. Oh. That's still a lot of work. You're acting like what you did is nothing, but that's lies. Yeah. Um, so since you're getting uh, food from a lot of different sources, you must be getting deliveries like all the time. Yeah, we have it staggered out. Um, we try and get the bulk of it all at once so that it's easy to receive and put in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And then... But you when you're running out and you're, you have to reach well, out to... the problem with the festival for me is that it runs over the weekend. <laughs> oh. Not a lot of people working on the weekend. Right. So all we, at the festival. We, yeah, we do really, really good planning of what we need. Mm -hmm. We try and get out ahead of it, and I keep a real tight eye on it Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday till about noon. But then Saturday about noon is my last chance to get anything out here because unless I'm in real trouble and I have to like pull a lot of favors, nobody's coming out Saturday night or Sunday. Yeah, I can imagine. So I just keep an eye on it. Yeah, Bob, I need an extra ten thousand potatoes. Do yeah. you mind? Uh, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, it's not like it's not like a restaurant where it's like I need a case of lettuce, so I'm just gonna run to Safeway and pick it up. It's like, oh yeah, I need like 40 cases of peppers. Nice. Can't yeah, wait to the store to get that. Right, that's where your planning comes into play. You have yeah. to plan as yeah. close as possible, right? Yeah. We talked about the kitchen itself. Yeah. It's the only permanent structure here. What's it used for when you're not here? Uh, storage. We uh, we gut it and clean it at the end of the festival. And by we, I mean the volunteers. Um, <laughs> you guys clean this up, please. I'm going to go I'm gonna go sleep. <laughs> I'm going to go up and nap. <laughs> yeah, no, we do a really good job of tearing it down, inventorying everything, cleaning it. And then uh, once all the rentals go back, because we have to rent a ton of barbecues and a ton of tables. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once all that stuff goes back, then the festival uses it to store a lot of their gear, their tents, their pools, their tarps, that kind of thing. Oh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's multi-purpose. Cool. And the sides, no yeah, the sides it. shut down and... It uh, seals up like a bunker, and they lock it down for the winter. It's crazy. Yeah, it's just a occasional squirrel and bird that fry them up too. Sleep in there. <laughs> and I can see right now the uh, the volunteers are getting a little concert. There's yeah. some musicians. Yeah, lots in there. of the musicians will come by and play a song or two. Most meals get opened. Some of the local bands will come by and sing a song before we open the line. That's awesome. Yeah, That's it's great. great. Really good community out here. Really good. It's like a concert before the concert. Yeah. Very cool. We'll recruit some musicians. We'll say, if you come sing to our staff while they're cooking, you can be the first one in line. Little you know, I can't sing. <laughs> I was going to say, he's going to start uh, singing. <laughs> we'll get you to open the line tonight. Get everybody singing with you. You really want that? Yeah. People aren't going to people aren't gonna <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, ben, thanks for inviting us, buddy. Yeah, pleasure. I appreciate your time and letting us come in. Yeah. It's good to see you always. Let's eat. Yeah, let's eat. <laughs>